Okay, welcome back to part two of the singleton design pattern. In part one, we sort of sketched out the idea that uh, we want to have some kind of functionality that is centralized. It is used by many objects throughout the system, and we want to make sure that they all, all these ob the objects, they all use the same instance. Right? For the logger class, I don't want to have multiple instances of the logger so that they log to each of their own file. I want to have my system use the same logger class, for example. Right. So this leads us to the singleton design pattern. The intent is to ensure that there is only one instance of a class and we want to provide a global method so we can access this instance. Right. We saw a few examples previously. We have the logging functionality. Multiple classes in the system wants to use the logging functionality. They all, We want to make sure that they use the same class. We have the same idea with the database connection class that is responsible for connecting to the database. Maybe you have a, a printer and whenever you send a printing job to that it will be put into a queue and we want to make sure that you know, if multiple people are trying to print something they all use the same queue so this queue will be the centralized responsibility. Something often used in, in international systems is that you can change the language of the GUI and the approach is that we have a class that is responsible for holding the strings for the current language. So if I want to see the GUI in Danish, then that language class will load from a file all the Danish versions of the button text and uh, UI text, and then we can retrieve the correct text from that language class. If I then change to Romanian, for example, then the uh, language class will reload everything from the Romanian file and then you can access the same button text from this language class it just returns a Romanian version instead. Um, so the problem here is uh, how do we create this single class so that every part of the system has access to this uh, same instance. So for the logger class we want them to have access to the same logger instance. Right? And this is what the singleton will do for us. The idea is that uh, this same instance is used by many classes, so we have this many-to-one relationship. And another point is that we want to make sure that there can only exist one instance of this class. We don't want to have multiple logger instances or database connection instances. We want to make sure that all classes or objects in the system use the same instance. Right. And we do this with the singleton. Um, so the UML for the design pattern looks like this. I show here two versions. They basically tell the same thing. Um, we have three parts that are important. I have a private constructor. I have a get instance method. You can call this whatever you want. Get instance is conventional, I guess. It returns a variable of type singleton, the same as the class, and it is static underlined here. I also have a private instance, private field variable. I call it instance. It is static, and it is of the type singleton. There's a reference to itself. It says the same thing down here, private constructor, public get instance that is static. It returns a type, the same as the singleton class here. Um, if this was your logger, then it would be called logger and it would, uh, would return logger. And we have the uh, private static singleton variable called instance here. So inside the get instance method, we use this uh, lazy instantiation. Uh, there are many approaches to achieve this singleton functionality, and in this case, we use lazy instantiation. So uh, when I call, from outside I call this get instance, we first check if this instance, our private field variable, if it is null, then we create it. So the first first time this method get, get instance is called, then a new instance will be created and then we can return the instance. On uh, successive calls to get instance, it's no longer null, so we just skip this part and we just return this instance. So that means that all uh, classes or objects that call this method will all get returned the same instance. They now have a reference to the same instance, for example, the same logger class. Um, so 
same thing with the other type of design pattern or the other version of the UML. All right. So a second point here, the constructor is marked as private. Uh, and we do this to control how and when uh, we create a new instance of this singleton class. I don't want uh, any other classes to be able to create new instances because that would break the idea of having one instance only. So we create the constructor as a we make it private so uh, we can define when to create a new instance. The uh, get instance method is static because I need to call this method on the class itself to actually get the instance. So this is the method that returns the one instance we have. Um, and, and to get that instance, I need to call this. So it has to be static so I can call it on the class. And right, it will look something like this. I want to retrieve an instance of the singleton. I call it single, sort of. And because the get instance is static, I can call this method on the class itself rather than on the instance. Okay, so this is to the way to retrieve my singleton. If this was the logger, I would write logger and then logger.get instance. All right, this is the uh, end of part three. So we have introduced the idea of uh, a singleton. In the next part, we will look some look at some code examples.